So one of the number one questions I get all the time from people are, what is a sales engineer? People ask me, Cyrus, can you explain to me what a sales engineer is? What is your day-to-day -day like? Okay, what was it like for the boot camp that you did? How do you scale in the industry? How do you network? Things like that. Well, my next guest, I think, is even more uniquely poised to actually answer this question for you all than even I can. Y'all, my next guest, she is a, does not look like it at all, a 40-year-old black woman who broke into tech during the same boot camp that I did, but in my opinion, ended up working out even better for her than it did for me. Y'all, I'm super excited to have this guest on and talk about what she's currently doing, her next step plans, as well as the company she's working at. Tiffany, thank you for being here. Thank you for being technically, technically our, our first guest as the podcast version of Tech is the New Black. How are you doing? I am good. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. And I actually just turned 41. My birthday what? was on the 23rd, so I'm officially 41 now. I yes. didn't even know until, I think, yesterday, the day before yesterday, that you were 40. Like, really in my mind, because I've met you, I've been around you a couple times, mm -hmm. interacted. In my mind, I thought, I was like, ah, oh, I was like, she, I was like, she might be like a year or two, I'm 32, I was like, she might be like a year or two years younger than me. I was like, ah, but at the same time, she's a black woman, she could be a year or two years older than me. <laughs> and so when I saw 40, I was like, what? Yes. And what's crazy is even when I was thinking you were a year or two older or, or, or younger than me, even then I was thinking that based off of not even how you looked, but more so just the way you moved, your maturity, things like that. Mm -hmm. So to find it, I'm like, oh, wow, 40 and now 41. I'm like, that's that's crazy. That's yes. wild. Yeah. So it's funny because that actually brings up, this is completely random even from what uh, some of the things we're going to talk about. But that actually brings up one of the number one questions I get a lot. People ask, they're like, hey, I'm 37, 38, I'm 40. Like, yo, is the tech space for me? Can I get into tech? Are people hiring people my age? And in my mm -hmm. mind, I'm like, I'm like, I mean, that's that's not old. Like, yeah. But nevertheless, realizing like, okay, from their vantage point, maybe if I was 40, I'll be feeling the same way. But what are, I guess, your thoughts to like those conversations about ageism in this space? Right. It was definitely a thought of mine number mm -hmm. one not not only because of my age but the fact that usually by the time you're 40 you've been doing something else like much longer mm -hmm. so people are looking at you like okay why did you decide to make this career change like after a certain point and by the time you get to my age you're typically making a certain amount of money and so making a career change and now coming in knowing that you're the new kid on the block mm -hmm. you don't you know you have to take on the the mindset that you don't know anything your boss, which I'm pretty sure my boss is younger than me. Um, yes. And okay. so there's a lot of humility, you know, mm -hmm. involved in that. And it was definitely something that was on my mind. But I'm really big on when it's your season, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Like, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, what color you are, how long you've been doing something else. So I didn't let that uh, dissuade me. Um, I would just say make sure that you have all your ducks in a row and you know why you're doing it so that you don't get discouraged if it does, you know, come up. Did you, during your, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it in a moment, like your process of breaking into tech and, and things like that, but like during the interview process, the applying process, all of that, uh, was that like a, a thought in your mind? And did you, do you feel like you saw any hesitations or reservations from anyone? So I think, being a black woman and mm -hmm. looking younger than 40 definitely helped. Like, no one knew. <laughs> like, when I was interviewing. And no one probably asked you yeah, how old course, you were. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, you know, it would be illegal. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it would be illegal. And I think, you know, sometimes people are kind of trying to piece things together. Because mm -hmm. um, you do put on your resume, obviously, like when you graduated and things like that. If you didn't uh, go to college yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, they try to piece it together. But they obviously can't ask. And I think it just always throws people off. Or yeah. if by chance. Especially when they up. see you like when yeah. they see you like i was gonna say in person when they see you virtually mm -hmm. interviewing you they're probably like oh well okay this threw my math all the way off now. exactly uh, or people ask about kids you know like my son just turned 19 so they're kind of like well wait how does that you know add up was or like, whatever. Oh, she was so, in yeah. she was in sixth grade <laughs> right. doing some things <laughs> yes exactly so you know i'm i'm sure that it was a thought in people's minds it mm -hmm. never came up as a topic of conversation and i definitely think that you know, looking quote unquote more youthful helped versus, you know, somebody. I know there were like a couple people in my cohort that were older, one gentleman, mm -hmm. and that was a concern of his as well. Yeah. You know, just like, what is that going to look like when I'm interviewing? And, you know, I clearly look older. Yeah. When I did the program, um, there was a, 
a, a, a gentleman in my um in my cohort where he was in his mid 60s it was oh, wow. actually his third or fourth time doing the program but it wasn't because he was having trouble getting jobs he actually mm -hmm. had never applied for anything and many of the instructors were like man you got to get out there and in his mind he just was saying he was like ah you know i'm just making sure i'm i'm making sure i'm fully fully prepared and it's just you could just tell he just doubted that he was going to mm -hmm. get anything and so eventually you know i saw the news on linkedin and he ended up getting a job and i was i was i went crazy That's in his cool. comments right. you know as a sales engineer i was like dude because he's such a great person right. so you know it's it's so sad how oftentimes like ageism exists sexism exists mm -hmm. all these different isms exist in the world but i almost feel maybe maybe this is my thoughts i almost feel like sometimes we allow the fear of those things to be more powerful than even like the reality of them exactly i 100 percent agree like the fact of the matter is until you put yourself out there you don't know what's going to come of it anyway. You mm -hmm. know, I'm, I don't know how much money he spent doing that over and over again. All well, that time and energy, they, I think, like, they let him do it for I free. I think, that, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if they've changed it, but okay. but when I had done it in shortly after, it was like once you you pay for the program, mm -hmm. you can do you have access to that program. So you can show oh, okay. a pop-up. I mean, technically, I'm supposed to be able, if I want to just show up and just kind of be in there, then, you know, kind of be able to do that. So that's supposed to be how, how, how they sold it. Okay, got you. And that could be the case, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, still, I, I guess I didn't know that. But, yeah, just even the time and the energy, though. You know, it's like that time and that energy could have been actually interviewing with companies or talking mm -hmm. to. We just had a, a team meeting in Nashville last week, and there are two people your, who are visibly with the company that I work okay. with. And they are there are two people who are visibly older. Mm -hmm. Like I know that they're older, um, and they're like the rock stars of our team, a yeah. wealth of knowledge, and you know all is of it, that. Is or Ron one so, of them? Um, not Ron. You Ron know Ron? Is, I, so I know Ron. Ron yeah. gets around on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. So so just for clarity, the reason why I know Ron, I work at the company that Tiffany works at. I worked there for about two months literally the month i left tiffany started it i think one or two weeks later yes. yeah and it wasn't for bad reasons it's really a great company mm -hmm. and, and tiffany's going to talk about that uh but yeah that's how i know who ron is and like like yeah like you said he's clearly older like i think he's maybe 60s like mid 60s he's, he's, he's much he's significantly older his mind is sharp he's hard worker he's a great resource uh but yeah anyway i stole your thunder you yeah no 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 i was gonna say so doug is one of them. Maybe I'm thinking Doug. And Kat. Go ahead. Um, so, but yeah, like a mm -hmm. wealth. I mean, and Kat was like amazing. Like, hit me up anytime. Like, put mm -hmm. some time on my calendar. Um, so, I, I think that you should not discount yourself, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're older. Because we all bring, one of the things that we all had to, like, give a takeaway at the end of the, the time that we were there. Like, what was the, our biggest takeaway? And for me having come from a healthcare background, which I know, you know, we might get into or whatever, when you enter into spaces where people may have already been involved in tech or involved in the industry that your company services from a tech standpoint, you may like discount yourself, your experiences and things like that. So I, you know, said that my biggest takeaway was own your experience, okay. you know? And so it doesn't matter your background, your age and things like that, like own all of those things, because mm -hmm. the company who hires you is going to hire you for those unique characteristics that you have anyway, for what you bring to the table. So, so I guess when you mean own, like you kind of like, like dive into that a little deeper. Being so for me, it's being sure of myself, okay. being sure of how all the things I've done that have been great, the lessons mm -hmm. that I learned that weren't so great. Um, my my background, my expertise, how all of those things, even if it's not specific to the industry yeah. or specific to that particular, you know, field, that is going to help me in my job. Yeah. You know, and, and just because somebody else has been working in tech since they graduated doesn't make them any more um, well suited for the role yeah. over me. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's very true. Um, that's that's very true. I definitely agree with that. I want to kind of go on this a little bit longer, but um, for the sake of time, I do want to ask, so the, the company that you're at, so you're a sales engineer. Mm -hmm. One of the things, the questions people made sure I had to bring up was <laughs> if you can talk about your experience in terms of like just the day-to-day the -day or the week of being a sales engineer. Right. 
So I'm still in training, number one. Okay. So our training lasts for 12 weeks, and that was really – that was one of the key pieces that was important to me yeah. when I was looking for a company. Um, I've had some companies like, oh, yeah, we have an Excel spreadsheet, and you just kind of run through it. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, like, you, you're not getting ready to set me up to fail. Yeah, you know? and it look at me crazy. <laughs> exactly, because like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right, I'm like, okay, no, yeah. next, take me off your list. Um, and so with this company, I knew that my training would be for 12 weeks. It's I mean, they, well, you know, because yeah. you did it for a couple months or whatever. It's very regimented, which I'm type A, so I love that. Like, yeah. I like being able to check the boxes off. Okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. Oh, you love that. Yeah. I love that, yes. <laughs> um, and you have a go-to person. You know, yeah. you have your trainer who's walking you through certain information. Somebody who you can, you know, pop in teams, shoot them a little message or whatever, yeah. get your questions answered. So my day-to-day -day now, um, I typically – log in like around 9 a.m. but it's quiet really until 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, I know like okay for the week these are the videos that I need to watch the trainings I need to go through um, how I need to learn the information and so I block off time on my calendar there is never a day that I work eight hours yeah. And I'm comfortable with seeing that because my boss knows that as well. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> like my boss will legit like ping me and, you know, I know that this week is like a long week. Like you all are learning a little information. If you need to block off time in the middle of the day for a workout yeah. or a little nap, like you never have to. And I'm like, these people pushing me to take a nap. Even, yeah. <laughs> even Friday. So, OK, you know, we're off on Monday for the holiday. Yeah. So the Friday before the holiday. We end at 2 p.m. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. And I missed that. <laughs> and, you know, but this week we're learning, like, a lot of information mm -hmm. and coming off of that team meeting. So I just felt, like, a little bit behind, a little bit discombobulated. I'm like, you know, I know we get done at 2, but I'm probably going to, like, finish watching the rest of my videos after I got done with um, my demo. And my trainer is like, no, you'll have time. We're going to finish it up next week. Yeah. Enjoy your early, you know, off day or whatever. Um, but that's really what my typical day is. My day is based on what I know that I need to do. Yeah. I may have, like, between three and five planned meetings for the entire week, like the whole week. And the rest of that time is, like, how I see fit to, you know, schedule things on my, on my calendar. So. Yeah, so – my experience, so first off, my experience, I, I, I think when I had, because how long have you been there exactly? Like, is this week eight? This week? is, no, this is actually week, going into week seven. Okay. Going, right, into, going into week, into week seven. seven. Yeah, I hit a month on uh, August 18th, because I started July 18th. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that it's this is around the time uh this is around the time i had left um and uh for for those uh, listening or watching um the the reason that i had left was there was another opportunity at another company that i thought was was better fitting for me and also it was going to give me enough of a break to like build up everything you know with, with tech as a new black so i was like okay i think that's perfect uh but ukg is a fire company mm -hmm. Uh, fire company and I mean but the company I was at before uh, my first tech company Dialpad very similar in terms of many of the you know the off time people mm -hmm. kind of you know making sure hey you're taking time off because uh, my father had passed while I was at Dialpad and when they had found out about it they uh, they found I was in training when they found out my father passed mm -hmm. and you know they told me to take off as much time as i want to and i was scared i'm thinking in my mind like no nah, this is a trick right they're gonna, they gonna let me go they're exactly. gonna say hey uh so to you know me. so i told them i was like oh well i'll just take the day off i'll be back tomorrow they said no they said no they said take the rest of the week off don't worry you're gonna be paid and they said mm -hmm. they said hit us up monday let us know when you think you'll be ready to come back they said but your job yeah. is here don't worry about it and, you know, I started back working that next Monday. It's still in my head. I was like, ah, no, I got to get back to it. But I, I saw, like, their heart in that. And I was like, oh, this is really legit. And I stayed there for a while long enough to see, like, oh, wow, this is really how this company is. Then, of course, I learned this is the culture of most tech companies that are out there. Because this is just mm -hmm. kind of the, the the overarching. This is the culture of the of the tech industry. Right. And then when I was at, at uh, with UKG, where you're at now, Father's Day hit. 
And when my team found out, and again, I'm still in still in training mm-hmm. with UKG. When they found out that my father had passed, they got together and sent me like a care package. And I was like, well, this, yeah. is, this is crazy. This is yes. this is wild. Um, so so it's definitely uh super super beautiful. I know one of the que- some of these questions to me I think are like <laughs> ah, but I know that they're important to people. So right. since you are in training and orientation, are they mm-hmm. docking your pay? Are they giving you training pay, or have you been paid this past seven weeks, two months that you've been there? Have you been getting paid like your your like salary? I so let me tell you. <laughs> Not only am I getting paid my salary, I had a similar situation. No, no family, you know, passing, but I got COVID my third week of work. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even realize I had COVID. I was sick. I shot my be- my boss a message like that Monday morning, like, I'm not feeling my best. This is probably going to be an off-camera day for me, you know, just to give her a heads up, like, yeah. why I wasn't going to be on camera for the meetings that we had, including a one-on-one meeting that I had for her. And she's like, no problem. I'm kind of feeling the same way do what you need to do. So, you know, my son is 19. Like I said, we we may interact a little bit in the morning, but I hadn't actually like talked to anybody mm-hmm. until I got on my one-to-one call with her and realized like I sound horrible, you know, and she <laughs> recognized like you sound horrible. She's like, "Are you sure you're okay? Like do you need to take some time off?" I'm like, "No, I'm going to be okay. It's it's a quiet day. You know, I'm going to be okay." She's like, Tiffany, like, if you need to take the time, take the time. Later on that day, I'm like, oh, maybe I am worse off than I thought I was. Took a COVID test, found out I had COVID, shot her a text message because it was, like, after work hours. She's, like, immediately, I'm going to email your trainer, push everything back. I know that you, so how our schedule works is you learn information and then you do a demo on Friday. Yeah. So she's like, we're going to push your demo back. Don't worry about anything. The best thing you can do is take rest. Let us know if you need anything else. Similar to you. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, about yeah. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm saying that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm going to have a job come Monday or whatever. Um, but I, I could not work like I was sick. Like wow. if, at least for a couple of days, I couldn't even get out of bed. Um, and I didn't have to worry like all of her checking up on me was literally just checking up on me. Not yeah. just wanted to see how you were doing. When did that you think fake you're stuff back? like oh, we kind of right, need you. Exactly. Got to get back to training. I got yeah. a care package in the mail with like tea and all kinds of like little stuff, you know, to help me get better or whatever. And even that Monday, my trainer reached out to me like before we were supposed to get on for me to do my demo. Like, are you good to go? Like, if not, let me know. We can push it back. Like, I just want to make sure that you, you know, that you're good. Yeah. So during that time and during the entire time, I have been getting my my pay, like what it says on my offer letter. And then one of the things that they do, which was really impressive to me, is so you know for those who don't know when you're an SE because you're part of like pre-sales a portion of your um you know your on target earnings so like your total salary package is attached to a commission and they kind of give you this incentive because even when you're out in the field initially like you're still it's like you got training wheels like you're out of training but you may not necessarily be closing any deals. They're like, okay, we're gonna entice you a little bit to continue learning, to keep pushing forward, doing your best. We're gonna give you your commission for three months for for no reason yeah, at all. Yeah, just, just so you, you can get a taste, so you up. get a exactly. taste of what it's like. Yeah, so this month is my first month getting that, and Ooh. I'm like, boy, oh boy, <laughs> yes. And I'm getting ready to uh, leave for a, a Mediterranean cruise, like the end of October. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, these little commission checks. Oh, coming ready real to be handy. Living real good in Barcelona. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, fire. Yeah, so no, you get your pay. That's fire. Yeah, because I, I know. Um, and, and one of the things I do want to dispel. Uh, listen, y'all, don't think that you have to work at her company. Because one of the things I noticed mm-hmm. is that when people found out I was a dial pad. Everyone was trying to work at Dialpad because they're thinking, oh, the benefits Cyrus is getting, you know, how great his company is, things like that. For, and anyone who, who wants to know all the benefits and stuff that she's getting, I actually interviewed her before. I interviewed Tiffany on IG Live. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll put a link to that video in the description. Uh, but you can watch that interview where she goes through the list of the benefits, things like that. But most of the benefits, most of what we're talking about is experienced 
industry wide. Mm -hmm. Not for every single company, there are definitely some bad Apple companies out there, but one of the things I try to dispel from people is don't think you have to work at Dialpad. Don't think you have to work at UKG mm -hmm. or, or like our friend uh, Malachi. Don't think you have to work at Taboola. Like don't think right. you, it needs to be these companies. There are literally, literally tens and thousands of tech companies out there uh, that are offering really great pay and really great benefits. But you're someone who many most people who want to be in tech they they want to be in tech because they're like hey they're in a very bad financial place mm -hmm. and they're like man i want to i want to make more money so i want to be in tech but that was not the case with you you right. know you were making you're making really good money working in the healthcare industry so like why would you as as a woman who had been in your industry for a while you were very well positioned you were making making good money uh, you knew your industry very well. Mm -hmm. Why, what led you to take that leap to want to transition out of that comfort zone and good pay and, and you didn't need to be in tech? What prompted you to make that step and to put in the work? To put it short, burnout. You know, mm -hmm. anybody who knows somebody who works in healthcare can probably, you know, resonate with they feel burned out, you know. Mm -hmm. After working in that field for so long, in general, I was already starting to experience some burnout. Yeah. And then COVID hit. And when when COVID first hit, I was actually doing home health. So for people who don't know, I would literally like drive around the territory that I was covering and go in people's homes. Well, when COVID hit, people didn't want you coming in their homes. That's true. And then... Uh, the facilities that we would cover, like these assisted living facilities, nursing mm -hmm. homes and things like that, that we were contracted with, they didn't want us coming in. Like everything was shut down. And so number one, my livelihood started being oh, affected. Okay, yeah. um, and I'm like, when I start have to, you know, when I'm dipping in savings to pay bills, like <laughs> we, we can't do that. Yeah. And uh, so I actually went back to a healthcare system, a hospital that I used to work at before I decided to do home health. Like six, it was like six years prior. And one of my coworkers was the manager. So it was, you know, it was easy, no yeah. brainer or whatever. Um, but I was not working full time. I've not worked full time in forever. So just to have to transition back into the hospital and work full time was not going to work for me. Now that worked in my advantage because I was getting paid really good money because mm -hmm. they don't have to pay you benefits. Um, but the disadvantage to that. <laughs> That's how they do it. Exactly. Oh, yeah, your benefits are going to pay you good. Well, get your own benefits. <laughs> exactly. Which, you know, yeah, is expensive, you know? Um, and so it it was nice from that standpoint, but it got to a point where having to deal with the weight of COVID, mm -hmm. not just exposure, but also, um, you know, as a as a therapist, I typically don't have to deal with like patients dying, right? Mm -hmm. Like usually when I'm working with patients, they are doing relatively well, which yeah. is why we're trying to rehabilitate them. Like they're out of that acute illness part well, with COVID, we didn't have that luxury because people had to get up, they had to be moving. And so um, it just got to be too much, you know, and I'm like, I got to find something different. And I really didn't even know what that looked like. Um, I've also done like some business coaching on the side in various aspects. I had built my own health coaching business. So I knew that I liked talking to people, coaching people, presenting to people and things like that. And uh, you know, saw your live actually. And I, I wasn't on at the beginning, so I didn't hear like what you were talking about or like what your role was or anything like that. Was I, was I interviewing someone? No, this was yours individually. And at the end, you recapped like what you do, what your role was, where you went, you know, and I'm like, okay, this sounds like something that kind of combines all of these things that I already enjoy doing. Yeah. And then the following week you were interviewing somebody. Um, why can't I, his name just... Is it Kai? No, not Kai. Uh, Eman yes. Emmanuel? Yeah, Emmanuel Hudson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emmanuel, yes. Uh, not Hudson, I'm tripping. I'm thinking of... Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of the comedian dude. Uh, yeah, our friend Emmanuel. Okay, yeah. yes. Um, and so that kind of like solidified it for me because I'm like, okay, these are two people... Two totally different backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, no understanding of tech prior to going into this boot camp, no background in tech or whatever. And so 
you know, we went ahead and I dove into it, started doing my research. Yeah, I think uh, I love using. So like you mentioned, like what you seen myself in, in E-Man and seeing that, OK, both of us are have two different backgrounds. I love one of the things that I love. So there are a lot of people that have, that have done careers or done uh, mm-hmm. the other boot camp that um, um that I sometimes um, uh, partner with to promote. But what I really love about the people that I feel like I've connected with the most who've done um, who've done the same boot camp as me, yourself, Kai, uh, E-Man um, and his wife is how different all of our backgrounds are uniquely different as well as how how different like it's been for all of us like we're finishing the program because people ask right. me all the time like oh well you know um hey how long is it gonna take me to get a job after the program and i'm like <laughs> yo like i'm right. not god like exactly. i don't know no one can tell you <laughs> that uh but but i i love giving them all of us as examples where it's like hey it took me two months it took my homeboy e-man's wife one month wow. it took my homeboy malachi three months it took my homegirl tiffany four mm-hmm. it took e-man five but it's like right. so it's literally it's like it's, it's a thousand factors that play into it but i'm like one common thread with all of us is that you know all of us took the program seriously mm-hmm. we all were like really grinding at it you know we were we were using the tools that they gave us exactly. um, and I, I love when you came on alive and you were kind of really harping on like yo like the work that's involved in it that you can't treat it like okay you do this program and then they just get give you they hand you a job it's right. like that's not the case at all um and so but but i really love how unique your story because i think you're the only one out of all of us that that had a had a, a a career that you had been in for a while, um, and so so I really uh, love that love that about your story. There's a dude uh, I don't want to sp- spend too much time on this, but it's just kind of random. There's a dude who hit me up recently, where he's complaining. He's like, oh hey, I, I did it, and it, he didn't do careers. He did a different program, and it's been about two months. He's like he's like man, it's been two months. I'm still not, and he's like really tripping, and he's like, I think all these companies are racist. I think that's why I'm not getting nothing. And I was like, dude, <laughs> no. buddy. I was like, buddy, dude, no, like stop it. Right. I was like, how long has it? And he was like, it's been too much. I'm like, dude. I was like, bro, no. And then I, you know, get, and I, I sent him you, and I sent him a bunch of other people. As I said, check out all these different people, whatever. And uh, and he sent some other voice note where he's still kind of doubting. And I was like, man, I just got to throw my hands up. I'm like, dude, because – and I told him, I said, man, you can't carry that. I said, once you break into the industry, I said, that mentality will, will, will still tear you up. It'll keep exactly. you from moving up in this industry. Yeah. Um. So the company that you're at, we don't have too much too, uh, too much time because we have to get to the next segment. But what are some interesting things with UKG's technology – Mm-hmm. That you think would really trip people out, where it's because like, again they're they're so so UKG they're at HR software they're a merger of two different companies one is called Ultimate uh, and uh, Ultimate uh, Pro or mm-hmm. Ultimate Pro I think yeah and then uh, and then the other one is Kronos Group so they merge together into one company UKG they're an HR software company and one of the things I think is really interesting is how people don't even know what technology can do it's like what is a HR software company do mm-hmm. so can you mention probably a couple of the really cool features they do that will probably blow people's minds right so i was the same way <laughs> i am like i don't know and the, so like the the techie term is like human capital management and I'm like okay that sounds a little shady like <laughs> you know human capital management or whatever <laughs> you know but what i love about it is it, if you think about yourself as an employee, mm-hmm. what we do is manage everything from even the time of recruitment to the time that you are fired <laughs> yeah. or the time that you are, you know, retire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so even, you know, when you all go to like career sites and you apply for a job, and you get like that little quick email that says thank you for your application yada 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 we look forward to reaching back to you like our software does that Mm -hmm. you know or when you are moving through that interview process and um, you get hired and you're signing on for benefits and so your company sends you to a website for you to start selecting all of your benefits or whatever like that's what our company does like it's you know your company's information like painted on top of our platform yeah. if you will. i think most people don't even pay attention to these things mm-hmm. when they're working at a company they're just like okay yeah i got an alert about this let me do this and they don't really think 
through like yo another company probably had to be involved with mm-hmm. doing this and that yo this is technology and like how did this actually happen right even you getting paid like you getting paid properly you know um it, it all is an underlying platform and and software to make sure that that happens and so it's really important that your company <laughs> is using a good software because we've all probably had those instances where you worked for a company and they was crappy and your paycheck didn't come on time yeah, and they like, oh, facts. we got we got to cut you a check and it might be three or four days and my bills still need to be paid. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, yeah. My favorite, so there, there are a lot of different features we could talk through with UKG, uh, but my favorite feature that I thought was really trippy is how they have their AI can tell the company if a person is con- might be considering quitting. Yes. Which is like, yo. <laughs> yep. Like, how? <laughs> right. That's trippy. So are you quiet quitting? <laughs> yeah. Have you heard about the quiet yes, quitting? Yes. Yeah. Your company knows you're quiet <laughs> if, if they If they got UKG they software, UKG, they know exactly. you thinking about quitting. Right. Like, yes. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, all right. So cool. So we're actually about to go ahead and go to uh, a segment, uh, Techie or Tacky. Uh, so this is where we discuss recent technology and determine if it's something we actually want, aka techie, or if it's something no one has a need for, tacky. Mm, okay. uh, so techie or tacky. So the first one um, that we actually are uh, going to be talking about is the voice control with Amazon. So Amazon is adding. Uh, Amazon is adding a voice powered gaming to big name games with Alexa game control. Kind of reading on, it says, Amazon announced the launch of Alexa game control, allowing gamers to play games by using their voice. Uh, One of the games, I'm not even trying to promote it, Dead Island 2 will be the first game to be compatible with Alexa game control with other games to follow. Gamers can yell at zombies now is what they put in there. (laughs) So Alexa game control gives users an accessible hands-free option that allows for easier gaming, Plus, game developers also gain a new tool they can use for a more interactive gaming experience. It's currently in private beta and will initially only be available in North America with no word on when it'll be available in other countries. Amazon was not immediately available to answer our questions. So, what do you, what do you think about this? Like, So, to play video games, now I literally just bought a PS5. Okay. And I've not played video games in a long time. Right. So, so I'm getting lightheaded. I'm planning and watch. I'm getting mo- virtual motion sickness. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess, do you do you consider this techie or tacky? Where it's like, yo, to play a video game where I'm just using my voice? Or is this like, yo, that's, that's dumb? Right. So for me, number yeah. one, I come from like Super Nintendo generation, okay. Atari generation. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I was excited when Super Nintendo came out, right? Yeah. PS4, PS5, all that kind of stuff. When my son was coming up and me trying to play video games with him, like, that first person view, like, I just can't. Like, I'm the same way. Like, I'm like, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I'm fighting. I don't know where to <laughs> go. Um, and one of the things that I kind of, like, in my occupational therapy brain, because, like, mm-hmm. we work a lot with, you know, how people function and things like that. One of the ways that I would kind of say, well, at least he's getting something out of this video game is like hand eye coordination and things like that. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to have to go with tacky because I'm like now you just like you literally are just mindlessly like (laughs) playing a game and just having to talk like it's it's no, you know, it's already like no physical activity. And now you're literally like not being physical. Like that's one of the reasons why I love like the Wii. So if you had to like talk and move. Mm-hmm. I would maybe say techie, but if you just literally sitting there yelling at yo TV and telling it to shoot somebody, that's fine. No. It, it, it is like it's constantly like uh, regressing from doing anything. Like before, people always talked about gamers being lazy because they just sit on the couch. Now it's like they're not gonna have to move their fingers. <laughs> exactly, they're just gonna be able to lay there and just say stuff and stare at the screen. Right, turn uh, right. <laughs> like, so no. I say, I also deem this tacky okay. for a different reason. Okay, I can't wrap my mind around like. For me, it almost feel like an inconvenience. It's like, well, what does that mean? I'm going to like how you just said, like, I'm going to have to say, turn right, turn left, pull out gun, shoot. It's like that stupid. Right. Like what? Right. Like no. Like it's it's like 
my fingers can move faster than I can speak, you know. Exactly. And and so I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see it. Uh, I tried the, the, the video that they had on the website. I thought it was going to actually show it. But mm-hmm. it was really just a just a, a demo of the game. It was just them showing off the game, not showing like how players actually like what it might be like for them. Right. So right. yeah. So that for that case, I, I deem it tacky. Tiffany deems it tacky yeah. as well. Wanna know from y'all, do y'all think this is cool? Like maybe there's something that we're not thinking about, a perspective we're not thinking of, you might think is cool, makes this tacky, or do you think this is tacky? Anyway, let's move on to the next one. All right, so this one is this one is pretty interesting, and this is this is something that both of us are kind of sorta uh, looking like we might be customers or potential customers of this at some point. Okay. So AI or artificial intelligence have made jeans tailored for you, literally. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So Unspun's co-founder, chairman, and chief product officer always loved art and science, and over time, the passion grew into a career that brought together fashion design product design and manufacturing so i'll talk about the item all right so what this item is is uh, the company has an ai where you can actually set up your phone of course you have to go to their website or use their software you set up your phone it actually scans you so you have to step back it would scan you and the ai scans your body and then it creates a pair of jeans that are fitted perfectly to your body. So they actually, they're a clothing company that doesn't have clothes. They literally, they're a software clothing company where they basically, their AI is a tailor, where the AI tailors you at your house. It finds something that fits you perfectly. Of course, you choose ahead of time what color jeans you want. Mm-hmm. If you want them to be masculine or feminine, cut it. Is, is, and this is all from what they had in the article. And, uh, and you know, certain elements, you choose certain elements, but when it comes to, like, the sizing, the fitting, mm-hmm. the AI determines that to make them tailored specifically to you. So when the pants are actually made, they were made just for you. So the whole idea is that they don't want to waste clothing. They don't want to just make a bunch of clothes, and then some people don't buy them, and then it's supposed to be wasteful or bad for you, you know, bad for the, I was going to say the economy, but uh, but um, bad for the I don't know, recycle. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but but the whole idea of it is that it will be tailored specifically to you. Right. So do you consider this techie or tacky? Is this something where it's like, yo, that's that's cool. I actually might use that. Or it's like, what? Listen, as a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> specifically black woman. Like, as a black, as a black woman, woman right, okay, I can cool. all, I, you know, that's what I am. I can only yeah. speak. For yeah, true. <laughs> Those are facts. Techie. Oh, like, okay. I'm like. I need to look at like right now. Send me that link. Send me that link. Exactly. I mean, you know, black women, we we know how. Oh, that is true. That is a thing. Yeah, that's why Beyonce had the whole Darion jeans that were supposed to be jeans that like were okay. Exactly. Like you can only go to certain companies. Like I can't just walk in a store and buy a pair of jeans that's gonna fit like exactly like I want them to fit. And then I'm short too, so Mm -hmm. I I also have that problem. Like I may want a certain cut. But I can't get the cut because then, like, the jeans are past my ah, feet, you know, yeah. and all that kind of stuff or whatever. So it's very hard to find jeans. Um, so, yeah. This is a random Techie. sidebar. <laughs> I wonder if if uh, women who get, like, BBLs, I wonder how that affects jeans. They women. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Where they like, yo. Or they just buy, like, so Fashion Nova jeans. Oh, which yeah, I true. don't want to, like, put no plug on the, yeah, on the podcast yeah, yeah. Fashion Nova, but. <laughs> That's typically where I, you know, get my yeah. jeans or whatever. But mm-hmm. again, you're you're limited to certain styles and cuts when you are a certain height too. So that would be like very cool. But I would imagine that's where my BBL girls. Get. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that is? That, you know that does make sense because most of their models either have, are BBL girls or they are girls who have a certain shape that it fits that look right type of thing exactly uh, so that's that's super funny yes. all right so you so you you say it's techie yeah uh and you know what i guess kind of going to what you said where you're like okay i speak as a black man i guess i just speak as a i think as a man maybe a black man i think it's i think it's it's cool i don't want to say it's whack I will just say, it, to me, it's tech. I'm like, I ain't got no use for that. Like, right. Just, I'm like, what, 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 right. what are you thinking? We got to get Eric a mic while he over there. So he can try right. it. <laughs> he like, you tripping. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
<laughs> he was like, man, he's like, I got, he's like, man, I got a wife, I got kids. Like, yo, I love the AI to go ahead and, and print something out for them real quick. Right. <laughs> and they, they they do have it to where um e- even though they're, they're a software company, like mm-hmm. you can go to they, they partner with like local like locations where they actually oh, that's will really cool. either ship it there or you can go there and like actually just get it from those locations or they can ship it to mm-hmm. you. Uh, so so that that I think is cool. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Amazon is gonna partner with. I know Amazon's doing. Uh, they're doing physical Man. stores now, and they're doing some crazy futuristic stuff with their stores, to where their stores aren't even gonna have registers to have people there. And you can go literally. You can order your outfit in the dressing room. Like you can order your outfit from home. When you get to Amazon, your outfit, whatever outfits you order that you want to try on, will be waiting for you in a specific dressing room. Oh wow! So you get there, you can try them on. Whatever you don't want to try on, you'll be able to leave it in the dressing room. Whatever you want to keep, you just walk out the store because and they, charge, they you. charge you for it. That's what's crazy. Up. That's techie, too, crazy. For sure. <laughs> that, that's yeah, that's yes, techie. That's, that's techie. Yes. That's something we both can get behind. Right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, want to know from y'all, yo, do y'all think this AI, this software? Being able to scan you and being able to actually make something tailored specifically, literally to your body, do you consider that techie or do you think that's tacky? We definitely want to know. All right, so the last one we have for techie or tacky. Synthetic milk made without cows may be coming to a supermarket shelves near you. <laughs> you already <laughs> yeah, You already react. Especially you being a health coach. Like, I, you probably are. All right, so, uh, all right, so cool. All right, so let's, let's get through this. All right, so synthetic milk does not require cows or other animals. It can have the same biochemical makeup as animal milk, but is grown using an emerging biotechnology technique known as precision fermentation that produces biomass cultured from cells. More than 80% of the world's population regularly consumes dairy products. There have been increasing calls to re- to move beyond animal-based food systems to more sustainable forms of food production. Synthetic milk offers dairy milk without the concerns such as methane emissions or animal welfare, but it must overcome many challenges and pitfalls to become a fair, sustainable, and viable alternative to animal-based milk. And this comes from fizz.org. But... What do you think, techie or tacky? <laughs> so that's one of my toxic traits. I can't have my face. Like, you read it, like, instantly. <laughs> yeah, like, you oh, like, my goodness. Like, no. Yeah, for y'all listening, she she been making yeah. them, the, all the jerky faces, <laughs> the side eyes, all of that. Right. I mean, my question would be, why not just stop drinking milk? Like, if, if we've gone that far where mm. drinking milk is causing environmental concerns, obviously animal welfare concerns, like, just stop drinking milk. Like, no. And there's too many... For me, like I drink plant based milk. Like we yeah. don't drink um, cow's milk anyway. Um, so shout yeah, I feel like there's the too many. Right? Shout out to all the cows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's already too many other alternatives that aren't like that sketchy to me. Like oh, I yeah. don't want milk grown in a, a lab in a yeah. what did they say? Like out of cells. Like a petri dish type situation. <laughs> Yo, a petri dish. Like, I, yeah, I'm going to have to go with tacky, like through and through. And that's that's scary, actually. <laughs> yeah, so it's an emerging biotechnology technique known as precision fermentation that produces mm. biomass cultured from cells. Yeah. That is that's interesting. No for me. So l- let me ask this, and I'm not trying to sway you. I'm not trying right. to sway you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but. I want to know, do you think that this is potentially something that in your head where it's like you just don't fully know? And this is the same question I ask myself mm-hmm. where something is like, OK, maybe I just don't fully know. I need more. I need I have I got questions. Right. I got questions. And then I can fully like make like a, a confident decision. Or is it something where you're just like, nah, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I I'm don't think good. I would receive any information that would, <laughs> that would make me change my mind yeah i'm and i'm very particular that way anyway yeah. though like even like what i eat where i buy things yeah, from and stuff like sense. that um and and i'm by no means perfect like you know yeah. but if i can avoid it yeah then that's i'm just i'm gonna avoid it you know it's certain things you can't avoid and that's why my question was like why not just stop drinking milk then like yeah like 
I so think that yeah. Yeah, so all right, so let me keep it a buck. I consider this this tacky as well. I think I, I think as a consumer, I consider it tacky because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I, I'm not vegan. If I was vegan, I would just do what I'm currently doing, which is almond milk. I only drink almond milk. It's the only yeah. milk I drink. Uh, but, so it's like, okay, I'm, I'm not vegan, but if I was vegan, I'd do almond milk. I'm not going to stop drinking milk because I enjoy milk. So I think from a consumer, it doesn't make any sense. I think this is solely for them, for the producers of this, this is just money. It's a business mm-hmm. because since they're able to produce it without having to rely on the supply of of nuts or rely on the supply of, of cows or certain animals, they can probably just they might be able to mass produce this faster and maybe make drop the price and make it even lower. So I right. think it's just a, a business thing for them. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. But that again, for, for me as a consumer, I'm a consumer. I don't right. own I don't own a, a, a biomechanical fermentation <laughs> precision thing. I, I don't own right. that. So so I'm I'm gonna deem it as tacky. Right. Yeah. I'm glad we agree. <laughs> I'll be like, no, Cyrus, don't drink that biomechanical <laughs> milk. That's funny. But yo, again, y'all wanna know what do y'all think? Do y'all think this is tacky tack? I mean, we think this is really low key wild. But I don't know. It might be something to it that we ain't really considering. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. All right, super good. So uh, we <laughs> we got got through that. That was very uh, interesting. I, I'm a I'm a super fan. I'm subscribed to a bunch of different uh, tech news mm-hmm. uh, things. And so one of the things I wanted Tech is New Black to be is something where we could talk about like tech news and things happening in the world that people don't even know about. Uh, so that way people can kind of like. Know ahead of time, all right, what's about to hit the shelves? What's about to happen? Mm-hmm. What to be prepared for? Uh, but really to kind of give people insight so they can even look into these things. Because most of the stuff we're talking through are things that are not going to be out in mass until like six months to maybe even two years. And this gives people an opportunity to become educated on things before the media and certain sides of stuff jumps in and tries to push something, sway something. People are able to like have a certain understanding uh, of research for stuff. So, exactly. yeah. Super, super cool. All right, so uh, next thing, we have to get to the the pre-submitted questions um, that people yes. have sent in. Uh, so people sent in some questions wanting me to ask these to you specifically. It was a, it was a long list of them, but we had to condense it down for the sake of time. Okay. Uh, so uh, first question a user submitted is, Tiffany, do you... <laughs> this is a tough one. This is a, this is a, this is a tough one to ask. I, I I don't think anybody from UKG is gonna watch this whole video. We'll make sure not to air this clip, depending on what you say. Uh, but Tiffany, do you enjoy your job slash company? Please explain. Oh, definitely. Um, I literally, and this is like not for those of you who like don't know me. Like I, like I don't, I can't do fake. No so cap. Like, no cap. Like right seriously. Here. Um, I literally like wake up every day. Like I can't believe I get to work for this company like every day. Um, our trip in Nashville kind of solidified that for me because it's one thing to meet people virtually and you know, you have these virtual team meetings and everybody's in the team chat laughing, ha ha, whatever, but to be that way in person. And again, like it's, it's evident, like I'm a black woman. Mm -hmm. Uh, I and I don't look like and and I don't want this to sound like how it may sound to some people, but I'm not even like the black woman who might blend in well with white people. Yeah, you know, I, I mean that's real. Like, that's a real thing. Yeah, you like I'm a dreads black woman. Exactly. Really nice dress. You have dreads. It's like all mm-hmm. these different things that people would think. Exactly. You know, and even personality wise, like I don't switch and act one way around one group of people. Like I am who I am through and through, and to be. Um, accept it for like who I am and be able to have a good time. Like I've never been to Nashville before. I've never been, it's like, it's like and that's Nashville is honky town. Yes. And they like all talking about that before, yeah. like excited. And I'm like, I have no idea what y'all talking about. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this trip. <laughs> like yeah. y'all talking about cowboy boots and, and you know, country music or whatever. But I had a really, really good time. Like yeah. even the last like actual night we were there, we had left one bar, and we actually did do work too. I should say that we worked during the day, <laughs> but we partied at night. Exactly, at night, we partied yeah. at night, and uh, we had left one bar. We were waiting for our Uber, and it was like this more like a rhythm and blues type band playing upstairs at another bar. Yeah, and we're like, 
get in the Uber, go to another go to Uber, yeah, another I'm bar, and we, like, canceled the Uber. Like, so, like, she was literally getting ready to turn the corner. We're like, sorry, and, like, ran upstairs to this other bar, had another yeah. drink or whatever. So I say all that to say, like, so my company's there, like, their tagline is, um, our purpose is people. Yeah. And I have truly felt that way from That's how fine. I was treated, like, when I had COVID to – me being treated and appreciated and valued for like who I am as a black woman, um, even in person, right? Yeah. Lori, like you can't really fake energy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you're in person, so. That's real. Yeah, no, I love my company. And they do stuff that makes me, I'm like, I kinda had, you know, you hear people say, hop around, right? To yeah. increase your income. And I'm like, they doing stuff that's To make you me not like, wanna go nowhere. I may, I may like, be retired from here. You know, y'all right keep tossing this these carrots at me. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they are a really phenomenal company. And I mean, they're again, I say this all the time. Most tech companies are, in my opinion, they're definitely better than any, any industry I've worked in. I've worked in a few mm -hmm. different industries. And it's definitely head and shoulders above any other industry I've worked in. Nevertheless, UKG is one of those companies where they strive to be like a rose amongst lilies where mm -hmm. it's like oh it's already beautiful here but they strive to even stand but it makes yeah. sense because they are an hr solution company so it's like we kind of like we can't help company we can't be about helping companies retain their staff mm -hmm. and not go above and beyond to do the same ourselves exactly like uh, they so, actually own great places to work now so i know that's like oh yeah i heard super about familiar, that yeah. you know to most people who work for any type of corporation like your company is like striving yeah. to be so yeah so it's like they and have before, to before they example. bought it i can't remember how, like how high it was but before they bought um great places to work uh, make sure y'all check that out because uh it'll it'll show you great places to work like companies that are great to work but before they bought it they were ranked ridiculously high on it. I think mm -hmm. like something like top 10 lists of like great places to work. I might yeah. be wrong on that number, but y'all can look it up and go back on certain dates to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. So yeah, next question. I'm like, I'm like, okay, we're about to keep going <laughs> off on this question. All right. So next question, what soft skills did you lean on to help you break into tech? Mm. So as an occupational therapist, one of my, um, I guess like big skills that I already had was like how to, communicate, right? And talk to various people. Um, there are situations where if I am dealing with a patient, I would have had to communicate something like complex in a simple mm -hmm. way, and then turn around and be able to effectively communicate with a doctor about why I was deciding to do a specific thing with their patient. And, you know, for anybody who's ever dealt with a doctor, like you have to be very clear and specific, right? Like weed out all the garbage that doesn't really make sense. So that's really one of the the big skills that I lean on now. Like mm -hmm. even when I'm doing like, uh, you know, my, my trial presentations and things like that, just being able to communicate effectively. Uh, one of the other things that I pride myself on is like being able to really build rapport with people. Yeah. And again, it comes when you work in healthcare, you're dealing with all types of people from all walks of life. And then you're dealing with people at their worst where they really don't want to be bothered. And so you have mm -hmm. to have like a gift for finding like, how can I connect with this person mm -hmm. and do it pretty quickly um, because I got stuff to do, you know? And so, you know, from being an SE, like that's a mm -hmm. big part of our role is being able to connect with people so they talk to us and tell yes. us their problems so that we know what we're solving for. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the communication and the rapport are two big things. And then just, I like talking. So, you yeah. know, I, I lean heavily into that. Like, I like talking. I like talking to people. Um, and more importantly, listening to people and, and hearing their yeah. stories. If you get silent long enough, like, I'd be surprised, like, what people tell me. Just because yeah. I don't try to fill all the space. I think one of the one of the wonderful traits uh, for people who are considering being so. Because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge people person i'm not an extrovert but like i'm not mm -hmm. an extrovert i don't like to talk a lot well it's like that's wonderful because at se really you, you probably need to be able to listen better exactly than even talk because yeah. that's really uh, probably uh, one of the stronger yeah. parts about the role and to your point before you start the next question i, I am it. i'm an extrovert i mean i'm an introvert so for those mm -hmm. of you all who are concerned about like like do you need to be you know an extrovert like no like i 
I didn't leave my house yesterday because I went out Friday. Like, that's, <laughs> that's how much that's of an introvert funny. I am. Like, I'm like, oh, we did people yesterday. Like, okay, I got to stay in today. The, the, so. the best sales engineers that I've seen, most of them are introverts. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. And so, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. All right. So, uh, all right. So, your tip for those looking to choose a tech boot camp? Hmm. Do your research (laughs) like that's Yeah, I I mean, and and I don't want to, you know, sound like come off that way or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I know that that I actually get that question in my DM a lot, like uh, what boot camp to choose or which area to choose. And you have to do your research like, yes, I'm sharing my story. I know you go live every Monday, share your story. But at the end of the day, don't take our word for it like yeah. same way like if like i go to church and i listen to my pastor but i still open up my bible <laughs> you know yes, what i'm saying exactly. so it's like it's the same premise like do your research um make sure that the the boot camp that you're going to read the terms and conditions and things like that before you sign that contract and before you pay your money to be sure that you're you're getting what you want out of it and you know that you can put in what they are telling you you have to put in in order to get the result that they're saying you yeah. know and actually leads perfectly <laughs> into the next question uh what what are some like i guess one or two tips you would give to help someone be successful during a boot camp and post boot camp okay so one or two tips during boot camp show up live the sessions are recorded but unless you have like an emergency i would say show up live like the the interaction between the instructors your classmates and things like that is going to carry into like post which i guess i'll give my second tip for like post or whatever when you build those connections within the boot camp like i had one of my instructors actually refer me for a job um and now some of the connections that i have outside of that like just being able to interact with people in tech is because i built those relationships yeah. inside of the boot camp you know so yeah that's so important i uh i did a, a a webinar recently a live webinar where i was in part one of the days i was talking about how to move in the boot camp and post mm-hmm. and i was saying yo it's it's incredibly important to not just be like, oh, I'm going to just do this boot camp. I'm just going to kind of like whatever, take a few nights, not really pay attention, just do it and want to get a job. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yo, you don't realize that while you're doing this boot camp, it behooves you to be a standout student and to interact with the instructors because these instructors are all seniors in this space. Yes. And not saying they're going to get you a job, but it's like they could tell you, they could hook you up and tell you about some folks yeah. and stuff. And so that, that's how I got a dial pad. Like one of the instructors was like, yo, check out this company dial pad. Mm-hmm. I might know some people. And so it's it's important that uh that, that people do that. So um so I love that you um that you you spoke spoke to that. Yeah. All right, so um man, so there's a lot that I wanted us to talk about. We didn't have the uh, the time uh, to cover it, but I definitely I want to have you back in the future. Tiffany, what is something that I guess that's on your heart that you're like, man, I really want to convey, express to people. Mm. Um, and please share that as we close out. Right. You know, I was actually thinking about that, like on my drive over, I figured yeah. the question would come up, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like your, your parting, uh, statement or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I get a ton of questions, like I mentioned about not just what boot camp to go into, but like, how do I decide what to do in tech? Yeah. How do I decide what company to apply to and things like that? And, you know, it's Sunday and I'm not going to get too churchy on y'all. But get churchy. You know, right? hey, we can go there. What I will say is like before, like, yes, I wound up, you know, on like on Instagram listening to your live or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it was already something that I was like praying about. Like I knew I cannot stay at my job. Yeah. Everything that's happened, like the post that I posted on LinkedIn that blew up, that led to me getting the job that I have, like it's truly of God. Like yeah. I, I think I'm special, but you know what I'm saying? But not to that extent. Like the, the post was not, I don't think that it was like viral worthy, but it literally went viral. Mm-hmm. And so my, my parting advice would be, don't let what you see somebody else doing put you out of position, you know, cause it may mm-hmm. not be like, I, I want everybody to get it like a taste of this money, a taste of this yeah. life. Um, but I'm a real big proponent of being a good steward over the now. That's and good. so if you're at your job, like even in the midst of me trying to leave my job, I got employee of the month. 
I hated being there. Wow. I hated it. But I got employee of the month, right? So it's like, make sure that you're operating in excellence and taking care of what God is giving you in the now because it don't matter what boot camp you go to, what company you decide to apply to, or what route you decide to take. If it's not God's timing, then it's not going to happen, you know? Yeah, and thanks. so just make sure that you're not out of position. What is for you will be there, you know? In, in the right timing, when is your timing to do it or whatever. So take the information, do the research, um, and then just start making sure that you are in proper position in order to receive it when it's time for you to do that. That is good. Tiffany, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy like for what God has been doing in your life. I'm very happy just for just for your story, like where it's at right now. It's been super dope, like connecting with you. Um, I definitely look forward to us getting to know each other more. We're gonna do some really other cool things with Texas yes. New Black, so be on the lookout uh, for some invites for other things. Uh, for sure. Thank you so much. So Tiffany, can you please tell people where they can find you at and connect with you? Definitely, so if you are on Instagram or LinkedIn, I uh, can be found on Instagram at, at Health Coach Tiffany and on LinkedIn, Tiffany Poole. You know, this, I'm uh, not going to say I'm going to be posting on there, but y'all still connect with me. I'll answer, <laughs> I'll answer your DMs and your messages, though. But when she does <laughs> post, it's viral worthy. So make sure <laughs> <Right>. you connect. <laughs> Yo, so thank you all for joining us on this episode of Tech is the New Black. Uh, make sure y'all do all the stuff that you're supposed to do on the social media platforms. Like, subscribe, share, turn the bell on, all that good stuff. Tell your friends about it. And please let us know in the comments like what you think about it, what you want to see next. And we'll see you all in the next episode.